and welcome. You're watching Head to Head. I'm Antonina Andosha with UATV. Ukraine will supply Konos cannon guided missiles to Turkey. The deal was signed at the International Defense Exhibition in Istanbul. The contract envisages that the weapons will be produced by the Kiev based construction bureau Luch. Then they will be delivered to Turkey so that the missiles can be integrated into the ordnance of Turkish main battle tanks. To talk more about this, we welcome to the studio today Denis Gurag. He's a senior fellow at the Potomac Foundation. Hello and thank you for coming. Hello. So, first of all, let's talk about the um, the Expo in general. Yep. Uh, so, IDEF 2019 is quite a big forum um, mm -hmm. in international military market. Uh, as Turkey grows its uh, importance as, as uh, not only a defense market, but also um, as a big supplier of uh, weaponry abroad. Mm -hmm. uh, for the last two decades, Turkey has grown into a uh, regional powerhouse in geopolitical sense mm -hmm. and also obviously in the military sense. How long has Ukraine been participating in this very event? Because this is, <laughs> this is an annual expo. Well, start, starting from probably the very beginning. So mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it happens each two years. That's a usual thing for defense exhibitions. Uh, well, this one is considered uh, like a regional one of top regional ones. Why is it important for Ukraine to be a part of such an exhibition? Well, uh, apart from uh, necessity to advertise and to market uh, our defense products, mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, you, Turkey became a strategic partner basically in uh, defense industry uh, for Ukraine uh, recently for the last five years, I mm -hmm. would say since the start of the conflict in Donbas. Um, therefore, it makes sense for us to integrate closer and closer. And this uh, contract that you've mentioned is just one of the signs of, of such integration. This is the first and only contract that Ukraine has signed with Turkey uh, concerning weaponry and ordnance. No, no it's, it's a sequence of contracts. So this one started, I think, a few years ago, uh, negotiations on this one mm -hmm. as on others. So recent things which happened, you might have seen, was the purchase by Ukraine of uh, attacking uh, U U UAVs, mm -hmm. uh, drones mm -hmm. from Turkey. And uh, before that, there was quite a big um, event or contract uh, with uh, Turkey, uh, with Ukraine buying from Turkey um, radio stations, mm -hmm. uh, UHF radios mm -hmm. uh, to, for, to supply for our army and actually uh, that contract is quite significant as well because uh, it's the first ever offset contract in Ukrainian history, which mm -hmm. means that Ukraine acquires also technology from abroad. Uh, Turkey uh, has obligation to transfer technology and uh, uh, to Ukraine to for us to be able to build uh, those radio stations here. So this is a part of uh, overall strategy which was initiated, uh, launched in back in 2014, 2015. Mm -hmm. by presidents of Ukraine and Turkey and uh, um, now we see like practical signs of such cooperation happening. Uh, why only now? Because uh, well, defense industries, um, cycles in defense industry are, are, are quite long due to bureaucracy and, and sophistication of, of the things that needed to be decided. Mm -hmm. Therefore, uh, it takes at least a few years for each contract to be prepared and, and, then, and then signed. Mm -hmm. Uh, the contract that has been signed earlier, meaning this yeah. one, the, the, the last one, what is so special about it? What's the duration of the contract? And what is so special about these uh, cannon-guided missiles called CONUS? Well, the duration is not that important, probably. Uh, well, then in, in, this the, case, the in this case, the duration would be indefinite. Why? Because once uh, some weaponry, some ordnance is integrated into a larger system like the, like the Turkish tank, uh, Altai, mm -hmm. uh, which is going to be manufactured with our uh, with our guided missiles. Uh, this means that uh, actually all the fur all further tanks under that program will Are have those. Be... Yeah, will will okay. have those guided missiles. Uh, this is a very significant contract for us because uh, Turkey has a program to manufacture at least a thousand of those tanks, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. uh, as only the first stage. So each country. Um, which considers itself a defense leader 
uh, like Turkey considers itself. Mm, the main priority for it is to have like a uh, few of indigenous uh, weapon systems, like for instance, for infantry and for ground operations, uh, such countries need tanks. Mm -hmm. Therefore, for them, for Turkey, it's um, kind of the project of the national pride. You know, like for Ukraine, there is tank Oplot, mm -hmm. which is considered our national pride. So for them, Altai will be also their national pride, and that's that's actually. Uh, uh, for Ukraine, it's also a very good sign that uh, a NATO country purchases, uh, which Turkey is, purchases weapon systems from Ukraine. And uh, actually, that's kind of a, a model of industrial cooperation which Ukraine can have with NATO countries. Yet and still, what are the main peculiarities? What is so special about the Kunas cannon guided missiles? Well, there's, there are not that many guided uh, missiles, anti-tank guided missiles worldwide, and Ukrainian ones are very competitive. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is, I would say, the best hot selling product now uh, from Ukraine on the international market. Um, it's, 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 ju it's just very capable and competitive in terms of uh, uh, price and, and its qualities. Overall, in general, how would you? Uh, what, what's your evaluation of the uh, weapons and ordnance production in Ukraine? Would you give these days? Let's say comparing to the situation that we had in the country five years ago before the Russian hybrid mm. war broke out. It's much better, definitely. Ukraine launched its uh, defense production significantly, uh, well, due to the fact that we needed to defend ourselves. Uh, but it's still, uh, it's there's still much more to be done in terms of integration with uh, NATO partners. Mm -hmm. um, basically, that's the way for Ukraine to develop itself. Uh, on the worldwide market is uh, as much possible integration with NATO countries in terms of uh, supply chains and uh, not only finished systems, but also components, production and supply. Um, on the scale of 1 to 10, <coughs> how competitive is Ukraine on the international weapon, weapons production? Well, we're arena? still uh, one of 10 the largest arms exporters, mm -hmm. uh, so I would say yeah, we, we are in top 10. I don't know, I don't know if that's <laughs> this is the kind of comparison you want to hear, but uh, yeah, that's we, we are competitive, we are capable and we are mm -hmm. able to supply very sophisticated and uh, top-notch weapon systems. What's the latest um, that, um, that I don't know, the, the, the latest ideas or the latest technologies that are being developed in Ukraine? Well, if that's the all, information for the well, wide audience. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're actually uh, mm, necessity-driven, you know, conflict-driven. So mm -hmm. uh, the nature of conflict, uh, of war, which we have with Russia and Donbass, has uh, few of the ways to respond. Uh, so um, starting from 2014, we've gradually and uh, systematically developed weapon systems that needed that are necessary for that response. As if we speak about current ones, uh, the programs which we which everybody expects to be completed and, and uh, serial production of which should be launched mm -hmm. is uh, mainly missiles, uh, which are ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, uh, mm -hmm. actually also manufactured by Luch, which we are talking about today. Yes. Um, why? Because uh, this is the most effective response to the armament uh, strength and uh, Russian capabilities because obviously uh, their army is, is much larger and building up the same amount of soldiers and other equipment is uh, just irrational for Ukraine. Therefore, strategically Ukraine um, develops defensive weapon systems like missiles which are able to penetrate uh, the enemy at uh, long distances, say mm -hmm. a few hundred kilometers. So basically anything and that is And in being the sea. So that's, mm -hmm. that's instead of building, for instance, a huge fleet of, uh, of fighter jets or a huge fleet of, uh, of uh, ships. Yeah. So basically anything that has been produced over the past five years is aimed at uh, tackling Russia's aggression in the east of Ukraine? Mostly, yeah. Well, it's, it's a balance always, you know. Ukraine still has to supply the demand on international market and it not, it not always matches what mm -hmm. we need at the domestic market and an international market. But 
there, the balance is, is, is there and uh, um, we're, we're moving towards, you know, uh, why Ukraine's weapons are interesting for the world, and if we speak about market perspective, is because they're combat proven. Mm -hmm. yeah, not only missiles, but Good everything point. else. Yeah, yeah, and that's uh, and they're combat proven with the strongest, basically one of three strongest armies in the world mm -hmm. against them. Mm -hmm. uh, therefore, that that's a very big competitive advantage. Okay, well, I am very pleased with the information that I have heard that Ukraine is in in the top ten weapons producers, and that we have. And we are producing and we're planning to produce combat proven weapons. Thank you so much for coming, for sharing this information with us. Thank you. That was Denise Gurak. He's a senior fellow at the Potomac Foundation. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned with UATV for more.